I hope you will be all fine. Welcome to my channel, Muhammad Huzaifa Stories World. So, my friends, I am going to tell you a story about birth of Prophet Muhammad, episode 15, the attempt to assassinate Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam. Shall we start? Once upon a time ago, our story began. But before we begin, let's send salam on the final prophets sent to man. When the wonderful children hear that, what do they say? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Excellent job. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Muslims had decided that they needed to immigrate to Medina. To immigrate means to travel to a different country to live there. They knew that they had to get away from the wicked kuffar. So day by day, little by little, the Muslims began to flee Mecca and go to Medina. And Prophet Muhammad him still did not immigrate to Mecca. He knew he could not leave until Allah sent down Angel Jibreel with the command to travel. The evil kuffar, though, began to notice that the Muslims and Prophet Muhammad were escaping Mecca and heading to Medina. They called for an emergency meeting. We need to make a plan, they said, a plan to end Islam and the Muslims once and for all. If we leave the Muslims to go to Medina, they will grow stronger there and become a threat to us. So the chiefs of the kuffar gathered together in a house. What was it called? Dar al Nadwa. The chiefs thought and thought. One of them said, What if we expel Muhammad? We kick him out of our lairs? We leave him to go to any other country, but he stays away from us? But somebody replied to this This is not a good idea at all. Don't you see how beautiful Muhammad's speech is and how anyone who sees and hears him loves him? If he goes anywhere else, all the people there will follow him and they will be stronger than us and come fight us now. So then another chief said, The best thing to do is to imprison Muhammad to keep him trapped inside somewhere. But then someone else replied, No, of course not. His Muslim friends would never leave him in prison. They would attack us, free him and they would win. We need to think of something else. Then the worst and most evil of the kuffar, Abu Jahl said, I have a no idea has said yet. What is it that she's asked? The best thing to do is to kill the prophet, Abu Jahl told them. Every tribe, family would choose their strongest youth. Then all the strong youths will gather together and will attack Muhammad at his house at this time killing him with one blow. With all the tribes working together, Prophet Muhammad's family would not be able to take them all or avenge Prophet Muhammad's death. The Kufar agreed to this horrible, horrible plot. They agreed that when Prophet Muhammad went to sleep, the strong youths will all gather outside of his house armed with swords and then attack him together, each hitting him with one single blow. Whoa! What an what evil, an plot, evil it plot it was! Such pure evil! Such pure and against evil! Truth, against and the against the most perfect truth. human against in the, the whole most perfect wide human world! In the, whole the person wide with the kindest world. heart! The person, the person with the kindest who heart! The person who never hurt anybody! Or any animal! Or, any animal, or, even, or a tree. even a tree! who only wanted them to listen to his words so that they could be good believers who did kind and righteous things and so that Allah would love them and admit them to paradise but their hearts were filled with evil and their thoughts cruel. The Kuffar thought they could get away with their plot. They thought that nobody had seen their meeting or heard their plan. They did not know that Allah hears everything and sees all that we do. Allah heard their words in their plan. He was watching them and he would not let them hurt Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah sent the angel Jibreel to warn Prophet Muhammad. Jibreel warned the Prophet from sleeping in his bed that night. 
He told the prophet that the evil Kufai were making an evil plot to kill him. And he informed Prophet Muhammad that the time had come to immigrate to Medina. Who was living with Prophet Muhammad in his house during this time? It was Ali. May Allah be with pleased him. At that time, Ali was a young man. But he was a very good and kind Muslim. And Ali was very brave. And he was not afraid of anything. Prophet Muhammad told Ali that the angel Jibreel had come and had warned him of an evil plot. And he told him that he would need to travel, immigrate to Medina. But before he was to travel, there was something very, very important that needed to be done. Do you know what it was? Prophet Muhammad wasallam told Ali that if there was there anything in the house that was a trust for the kuffar, they would need to return it before traveling to Medina. You see... The Kuffar used to leave some of their money and things with Prophet Muhammad. Kind of like how we leave our things in a bag. They knew he was trustworthy and took good care of the things. Even in the most difficult times, Prophet Muhammad thought of others and would not let their things be forgotten or lost. Can you imagine that? They were plotting to kill him and he was thinking about returning their belongings to them. The strongest of the Kuffar together in front of Prophet Muhammad's house so that as soon as he went out to pray they would attack him. They stood there, the strongest youth from every tribe, each armed with a giant sword. But Allah was stronger than them and he would protect the Prophet that he had chosen. Prophet Muhammad told Ali to sleep in his bed that night and to cover himself with the Prophet's blanket. He reassured him that Allah would protect him. Sure enough, Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, really did sleep in the Prophet's bed and with his blanket. And he was confident that none of the kuffar would hurt him since Prophet Muhammad had told him that. Meanwhile, the strong use of the kuffar peeked in a hole and saw someone sleeping in the bed. They thought it was Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam sleeping. But of course it was actually Ali the brave and strong young man sleeping in his place. As for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam, well Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam knew that he was a real messenger and that Allah loved him and would protect him. So do you know what he did? He walked right out of his house right in front of the youth and between them Allah made the youth's eyes not see him remember it was Allah who created the eyes in the first place and let them see so he could easily make them not see so they stood there like statues not seeing anything or doing anything Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam gathered some dust from the ground and blew it on their heads and as he was walking outside he recited وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنِ أَيْدِيهِمْ صَدَّهُمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ صَدَّهُمْ وَأَخْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْسِرُونَ And we have put a bar in front of them and a bar behind them and further we have covered them up so that they cannot see. Quran 36.9 That means Allah put a covering on their eyes which made them not see anything. It was just as if they were sleeping. They stood there waiting and waiting and waiting for Prophet Muhammad to come out until finally a man saw them all gathered together and approached them and asked, What are you all waiting for? They said, Muhammad. Then he said, What a disappointment you have lost. He passed right through you all and blew some dust on your heads. The man left them and they said, But we did not see him. And they began to clear the dust off their heads. They decided to peek from an opening in the door. And they saw someone sleeping in the bed. Oh, he's still sleeping inside. He did not go out or anything. And they stood here still waiting for a long time. Until finally they discovered the truth. Which drove them crazy. What did they discover? There was Ali. May Allah be pleased with him. Who was sleeping in the bed. They could not understand how this had happened. When Prophet Muhammad left his house, where did he go? 
he went to his dear friend, Asma Walad Abu Bakr Al Sadiq, his closest companion and the person he loved most. We love him too because Prophet Muhammad loved him. Abu Bakr Al Sadiq had begun preparing to immigrate himself and had wished with all his heart that he could travel with the Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad went to him and told him that Allah had sent the angel Jibreel and had ordered him to emigrate to Medina. No. Abu Bakr al Siddiq was thrilled to know that he would be the one to travel with the Prophet, the person he loved most in the whole wide world. Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr al Siddiq agreed with the man in Mecca to show them the way to Medina. But Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr decided to go to a far place and hide there first. And then they know that the Kufar were going to be searching for them everywhere. They went to a far away mountain, a mountain called Al Thor, Jabal Al Thor. At the opening of the mountain was a small cave. They hid inside for three days so that none of the Kufar would find them. But how did they eat, you might be wondering. Well, Abu Bakr's daughter, Asma bin Abi Bakr, was a brave and strong woman. She was not afraid of the Kuffar. She would go and bring them the food every day. Meanwhile, the wicked Kuffar were going crazy. How would Prophet Muhammad have escaped? How could they have not seen him or felt anything? They kept searching everywhere for him. And they decided to offer a reward of 100 camels to anyone who could tell him where he was. Somebody finally thought and said that they could be hiding in Jabal al sawar al sawar Mountain. Quickly, the Kufar went there. Prophet Muhammad and Abu Bakr al Siddiq were inside the cave in the mountain. They could see the legs of the Kufar. Abu Bakr began to feel afraid that the Kufar would find Prophet Muhammad. But Prophet Muhammad had told him not to be scared. Prophet Muhammad knew that Allah would make him victorious over the evil Kufar. Prophet Muhammad looked at Abu Bakr and said, What do you think of two persons, the third of whom is Allah? He meant, Don't be afraid. Allah was with them and with his power and might. They were the ones who were on the truth and doing the right thing. Allah would grant him victory. The evil kuffar was standing next to the cave and if they were looking in, they would find Prophet Muhammad. But who created their eyes and brain? Allah! Allah. Made them not think and not see what was before them. And so the Kuffar had walked away, sad and defeated. They had spent three days searching for Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they had been unable to find him. And they won't find him. Because Allah grants victory to his Prophet and to the And Allah defeats evil no matter how strong it is. And so Prophet Muhammad sallallahu walked out of the cave and Abu Bakr too so that they could begin their journey to Al Madina. Okay, now what do you think is going to happen on that journey? We'll find out in the next episode. Peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad.